Hello and welcome to the show Wicklow Good News with me, Gillian Godsell. Today I have Ferg Brown from Roasted Brown. Now, people, you might be familiar with Ferg because you're a well-known um, coffee roaster. That's your official title, am I right? You got that right, yeah, that's right. So you, you, you've operated various shops, coffee shops around Dublin, um, and you're, where are you based now? Where are you located? Uh, we roast, uh, we're based just behind the Pigeon House Cafe in Dalgany. Doug, excellent. So you, um, tell me just a little, little about, about your business uh, pre-COVID-19. You're very much into green, as in literally sustainable green uh, coffee beans. Yeah, yeah. Coffee beans are green before they're roasted. And yeah, we're very much into sustainability. We're what's called a specialty coffee roaster. So uh, the coffee we deal with is of the highest grade of coffee in the world, but it's actually the tiniest amount of coffee in the world. So we don't do commercial or commodity coffee. Um, and we supply mostly specialty coffee shops and cafes around the country. Um, we're a pretty small business. We have about 30 customers all in all. Um, plus then we, we set up to some offices and um, houses a bit of online business as well. So yeah, but yeah, I guess in brief, you know, what we do is we try and source the best coffee we can find in the world. We try and make sure that the money um, is going into the right hands and that lives are being blessed rather than hindered with that. And then we try and supply the tastiest coffee we can to coffee shops that are around the country. Brilliant. So that's, that's kind of your, what you do. And then yeah. on Sunday, March 15th, tell me what happened. <laughs> um, I mean, I think we were all sitting in front of our TVs and watching the same news that we'd been watching for <laughs> the last few nights. Um, yeah, kind of... My wife and I were just sitting there, a glass of wine, watching the news, and I guess kind of basking in the excitement of this tragic thing that was happening, you know, that kind of weird thing, um, and watching what was going to happen. And it hadn't really hit me yet that this was going to have a dramatic effect on me. I'd literally been out for a, a walk and a cigar with a friend of mine the night before and had said to him, Do you know, I think coffee would be pretty safe. Everyone's always going to drink coffee. Um, and then 48 hours later, I think pretty much all of our wholesale accounts had closed down. Um, preempting any restrictions the government had put in place, actually. Um, and so, yeah, that's so these are all your the cafes, the cafes the that cafes, had to close. Cafes that we supply, yeah. So yeah, that's Sunday night. It's just watching the news and then kind of scrolling, double screening, you know, looking at Instagram and seeing all these notices going up from the coffee shops that we supply, saying, you know, due to safety, blah blah blah, we're going to be closing down. And so, pretty much by Monday morning, we had no business. Wow, you know? yeah. out of business, one fell swoop. So. Yeah. You have done some very innovative thinking. What was the first bit, the, the first kickstart? You thought, well, how can I turn this on its head? Tell me about the first two week program that you did. Yeah, so look, we, we've always had an online shop, uh, roastedbrand.com, and it's a pretty decent shop. I mean, it does quite a bit of traffic and, and we've got lots of subscriptions. People get coffee for the year, shipped every month. And so it's been a nice little side earner, I guess. Um, mm -hmm. It immediately took off, you know, that same night, you know, watching wholesale accounts close down, we saw literally my phone buzzes in my pocket every time there's a sale online. <clears throat> and so that started kicking off um, and that kind of triggered the next idea, I guess, and that was that maybe our coffee shops can still uh, benefit from this, you know. Um, that's, that's a big jump. When I, when I read your story first, I thought, Somebody, somebody who wasn't Ferg Brown might have said, "Woo, lots of business for me. But you actually thought, well, how can I help my wholesalers as well? I mean, that, that's, that's quite a big jump. Not everybody would have made that, that sort of connection. Yeah, I, look, I mean, as a coffee roaster, you're in a kind of a helpful space, I guess. You know, like, you know, you buy coffee from people in developing countries and you're used to stretching yourself to try and make sure that they've got a good life and so that that kind of mentality is always a part of especially coffee roasters process anyways are we looking after people are our business relationships with those people benefiting their lives you know um, and it's very easy for us to think that way when it comes to third world or developing world and stuff like that and i suppose that literally the pendulum just swung in the other direction you know it's like all of a sudden i'm looking at all these other businesses on the other end of the chain that i'm in the middle of and that same kind of care just swung in a different direction, I suppose. So it was kind of obvious that, and having- Obvious, a, to, obvious to someone like you. I, I mean, I cannot say enough that, that that is not necessarily the commercial obvious. It's um, very impressive. Yeah. So you came up with this concept that our shop is their shop. Hmm. So tell me about that. So our shop, I mean, look, if, before I go on, it's not, it's not an entirely like 
um, selfless act by any means. You know, I guess it's it's partly seeing the long game too, and it's that if we can help our coffee shops bring in some income, well, then we will have coffee shops to supply when this is all over too, you know? And so there is an element of protecting our business in the long term, you know, for sure. So, um, yeah, our shop is their shop. It, it kind of just, it all, each other, every now and then you have just one of those moments where everything makes a lot of sense to you. And I just kind of saw that, you know, the guy or the girl on their way to work buying their flat white off the coffee shop that we supply every day is in some way or other my customer. They're just at the very other end of the chain. They don't give me the money, they give it to the coffee shop that we supply. <clears throat> so I just thought, well, if those people are frequenting those shops, well, then they like our coffee. And so they can still get our coffee and still buy it off that customer. So our online shop became their shop, our wholesale customer shop. So now what happens is, if someone, say, frequents the 11 Deli in Greystones, um, and they still want roasted brown coffee, they can go onto our website, they can choose whatever different bags of beans they want, and at the tail they'll be prompted, which coffee shop do you want to support? Do you want to support? You simply type in 11 Deli, and then that sale is then made by 11 Deli. The only difference is that we process the order rather than them handing it to you over the counter. Um, and so we get... Um, the cost that we would normally charge to the 11 Deli, and then they get the markup that they would normally get from the customers. So it's, it's pretty much the same, but just a bit different. We did do an initial offer for two weeks, uh, which was um, everyone who did that got a 10% discount, um, and the coffee shop actually got 100% of the markup on the beans. And that was just because I know what it's like to run a coffee shop. I know it's hard to succeed on the best of days. And I really wanted to do something that would say, look, here's an injection of money that will take the sting out of this until we all kind of get our whereabouts over the next two weeks. So it's now And it's, it's interesting too as well, because you're saying you're doing this as the long game, which is cool. And what's happening now is that the different coffee shops, they're promoting this concept. And you see, as they promote it from their social media, people who can't go through their doors, they you see extra extra sales coming through on the on your site, and then they get paid. So yeah. it's it's a fantastic, it's clever, 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 and and also and also that the consumer does well because they end up with it doesn't cost them as much if they had to buy. I'm obviously nice to have a latte handed to you, but the beans are slightly less expensive because uh, you're not you're not doing huge markups or gouging them or anything like that. So it's better value for them. It is value for them because, you know, if you buy a bag of beans for home and you're making a week's supply of coffee out of that, that's a lot cheaper than buying a coffee in a coffee shop every day, you yeah. know, because um, you're not covering the cost. We the don't want to give people bad habits of always having their coffee at home, but yeah. for the moment, for the moment. Yeah, for the moment. I mean, we'll, we'll cross that bridge when we come to it. Exactly. So there'll be new inspiration for that. And then the other thing that I, I love, because again, you're thinking about long term, and, and, and maybe this is because of, as you say, the, the industry that you're in, because you're dealing, because you buy direct as best you can, you source the best, best beans possible. Um, and you're saying you're also looking to work with other roasters, other roasters, <laughs> sounds almost funny, but um, yeah, because yeah. you have a supply of beans, green beans already yeah. available. Yeah. And that you're reaching out to other maybe mini boutique roasters who want to buy beans and don't have the money to buy a whole pallet or a whole container. Yeah, How's that going to work? Exactly, that's it. So, so I just kind of came up with the idea that our green is their green. So we done our shop is their shop, and you know this was the the next obvious spin off. Um, yeah, look, I mean, I guess again, not not an entirely selfless thing. You know, it's kind of looking at the bigger picture. Um, we have a lot of coffee that we're contracted to, both in Ireland and some of it's in London and some of it's in Belgium, and I don't want to. Um, renege on those contracts you know because i buy that coffee off of the some of it's off an importer in norway who i have a great relationship with and they have mortgages to pay and all of this kind of stuff and so if i stop buying that coffee then the knock-on effect on them is awful and, and then likewise we're bringing in coffee from ethiopia and literally if we don't buy that coffee those farmers i mean it's already developing it's already rough you know, and so it gets worse if we all of a sudden just look after ourselves. So as best as I can, I would like to honor the contracts that we have in coffee. And so um, on the ground, there will be small roasteries like us, you know, and smaller than us who won't have enough sales going on to buy in a full pallet of coffee from their importer. It's just too big an outlay and it'll kill them, you know. So... I just thought, well, look, we have this coffee in stock. A load of it is in Ireland already. 
So why don't we just offer it up and uh, let other small roasters around the country buy their green coffee from our shipping container that we have in Ireland. Um, and yeah, it means it helps me to keep somewhat of my stock ticking over before it gets too old. The ideal would be that we completely catch up and we don't have any aged coffee and I think that could happen. And then that they can kind of do some low risk green bean purchasing and just buy one sack at a time and roast it and sell it and it's not going to kill them. They'll actually take over as a business. Until, wow. Yeah. I love it. It's innovative. I can't wait for your next innovation. So we have <laughs> our shop is their shop. Yeah. Our green is their green. Will you come back and tell us what your next idea is? Because it's, it's going to be good. I can tell. <laughs> I have some ideas. I do have some ideas. I mean, I think we have to come out of a season like this with a bit of change, you know, um, and some changes we want and some changes we don't want, you know, um, but I'm starting to think of, you know, what are the changes we can make? How can we, uh, do you know what? The great thing about this was, uh, and Johnny, my coffee roaster articulated this the other day, um, is that we're every, every two weeks, as a staff, we meet at the roastery and we say, okay, how can we make sure that our hope, that the cafes we supply know we appreciate them, you know? And sometimes we send them out a box of donuts or, you know, something, you know, that type of thing, just to let them know, look, we value your business, you know, or if it's just call outs or whatever. Um, and this was a really, our shop is their shop, was a really cool way of saying, look, we really appreciate your loyalty to us over the years. And um, this is, what we're willing to do to show you that, you know, and it was a great way of just blanket showing all of our customers that look, we really value your business um, and we want to keep you in it, you know? So I think I want to, I think there's probably, I have some ideas of how we can kind of maintain this into post COVID-19, you know, but I won't say too much about it. Then no, no, no. When you have, when you have the next idea, come yeah. and tell us, we'll save it. I yeah. mean, we have two already. Our shop is their shop and our green is their green. That's two great campaigns thinking outside the box. So if people want to go uh, to your website, what is the address of the website? It's roastedbrown.com. Um, first thing you'll see is our shop is their shop link and it'll bring you straight through to the shop to buy coffee. Uh, it's so it's it's lovely and it doesn't doesn't the the coffee drinker doesn't cost them any more or any less but they're supporting their local cafe and hopefully yeah. please god when this is all over they'll open up again. Absolutely I mean you know to kind of give you an idea um of how beneficial it actually is you know like we've tried to stay away from spouting numbers and all of that kind of thing but um in very simple terms you know the good chunk of coffee shops who will have their first few weeks of coffee covered yeah because the hard part actually i don't know if everyone realizes this but the hard part is going to be when you reopen and you need credit so that you can resell of and then course. you're going to have a double credit balance from what you're already carrying into that season so if we can say to the coffee shops we supply look you're actually covered for a few weeks in coffee because of our shop is their shop you know yeah. that's a massive help and so it's not just a good idea that sounds good we didn't just do it for good pr we did it to actually try and help and make a difference you know and yeah. it's doing that so there's a few grand in the bank already you know and it's only four weeks into it so it's really good that is amazing well thank you so much for your time today i love it we have to be innovative to get out of this mess and, yeah. and your stuff is just fantastic thank you very much indeed for your time today ferg you're very welcome Thank you. And thank you to Marlene uh, Murphy for producing and Gavin Dowd on sound. You're listening to me, Gillian Godsell on Wicklow Good News. Be good, be safe and keep on helping others. <laughs>